Hello everybody, this is Kevin Ioli from Yahoo Sports and welcome to my boxing video series here again. I appreciate you being with me. Today I want to talk about boxing on television uh, and specifically I want to look at the big three. HBO, Showtime, and ESPN. Uh, ESPN is the newcomer in this, uh, so to speak. It's had boxing on for years, obviously, but it's now going at a different level where it's showing world-class fights, fights that you used to only see in recent years on HBO or Showtime, are now appearing on ESPN, and that's thanks to a deal the network signed um, with Top Rank, uh, and it began last July when Manny Pacquiao fought on the air and lost to uh, Jeff Horn in a very controversial fight. But before I kind of get into everything, I want to send out a word of caution. Let's think about something, and I don't know if you know this, but it's very interesting. 2016, the fight that had the largest audience was on NBC. Errol Spence Jr., who is now a world champion, but a terrific young fighter and a guy who I think has worlds of potential, uh, fought Leonard Bundu in August, August 21st, right after the gold medal men's basketball game. Uh, the fight went on right after the basketball game ended, and it got a massive rating. Uh, it peaked at 6.3 million. It averaged 4.8 million. It was a major home run. It showed kind of what boxing can do on television. But guess what? After that, NBC didn't show a fight in 2017. Now let's go back uh, to the, the biggest fight on television in 2017. That was Danny Garcia versus Keith Thurman. That was a fight that I had called for, a lot of my colleagues had called for. A terrific fight. Uh, it played out very well. It was on CBS. That had 5.1 million viewers. CBS has not done a fight since. So just by having big numbers does not guarantee uh, that you're going to have boxing back on the air. Uh, and I should point out that while those are massive numbers for boxing, look at what NFL does on a Sunday. Uh, look at what the NBA does. Those numbers aren't nearly as good when you put them in comparison with the sports that they're competing against. Um, but one good sign, ESPN's deal with top rank, has done is proved that there is a younger audience for boxing. Uh, Top Rank has done extremely well with the 18 to 34 crowd as well as the 18 to 49 crowd and that is the audience that helped the UFC grow and become such a powerhouse and the fact that Top Rank is able to capture those fans on its fights on ESPN is a good sign. But let's start with ESPN, kind of the good and the bad uh, of what's going on. I think it's great that they're showing elite level fighters. We got to see Terrence Crawford, my fighter of the year for 2017 fight on ESPN. We got to see Vasil Lomachenko, who was the fighter of the year for a lot of people. Uh, he was my runner-up. We saw him fight a couple of times on ESPN. I mentioned Manny Pacquiao was on there. Uh, a lot of really good quality fights. I think that's great. Mat matchmaking is so important, and ESPN is working with Top Rank on the matchmaking. What I don't like about ESPN's presentation of boxing is a couple of things. And number one, let's talk about the matchmaking because it will involve uh, a suggestion I have. And I don't like these squash matches. And what I mean by that is Top Rank has a lot of really good young talent that they're going to try to develop and have be the next level of stars and show up on ESPN in these fights. And two of them in particular... Shakur Stevenson, who was a silver medalist uh, in Rio de Janeiro at the Olympics, and Michael Conlon from Ireland, who was most known in 2016 at the Olympics for uh, tweeting to Vladimir Putin and going off when he lost a controversial decision. But Michael Conlon's a good young fighter, but they're fighting bums. They're fighting guys that just aren't good quality fighters. And that's okay because they're young fighters, but don't put their fights on the air. I think that time that you're devoting to them on the air when they're just squash matches and they don't appeal to anybody, um, I think could be better served by doing a pregame show. Uh, ESPN is doing a lot of good work, and this is the brainchild of Todd DeBuff, the president of Top Rank. He's long believed, hey, if we treat boxing like other sports, boxing will succeed on television, and I think he's proving right. Uh, ESPN does a lot of shoulder programming during the week. They have boxing in the crawl when they have fights on. They have the fighters on Sports Center. They include it in the rotation of stories. That is all good. Um, 
but do a pregame show. And instead of the fight and putting on Stevenson versus uh, uh, Tomato Can A and Conlon versus Tomato Can B, until they're ready to fight guys that they're competitive with and guys that have a chance to win, let's see their highlights on the pregame show, maybe interview them, but then you can use that pregame show to introduce the main event and co-main event fighters. I think that's really what would be a good thing for ESPN. The other thing that absolutely has to change is this crazy thing that they're doing. Uh, if you know, it was really bad after the last fight. If you notice, Teddy Atlas and Stephen A. Smith got into this screaming match against each other. And while I like having debate and having people with separate opinions talk about it because it gives the reader the 360 of uh, the issue that's going on, or the viewer, excuse me, I'm so used to the written word. But I think like when you saw after uh, the lomachenko Rigondeau fight on December 9th, Teddy Atlas came on with Stephen A. Smith to analyze the fight with John Bucci-Gross, and they started screaming at each other. And Bucci-Gross was trying to cut, it, cut in and stop it, and he couldn't do it. And it was Stephen A. and Teddy, and they were just hollering, and it was... It was terrible television, let's be honest here. Um, I think Teddy is a, a brilliant boxing guy, and you can use him to break down fights beforehand, you know, kind of go to the chalkboard and show what each fighter has to do and break down their strengths and weaknesses and do features like that. Uh, but you don't need to get into a screaming match with Stephen A. Smith. Um, and Stephen A. is a very popular personality. He is not a boxing expert, uh, and he doesn't bring the things to the table that Mark Kriegel does that, Tim Bradley, who were their two analysts, do, or the Teddy Atlas does. And I think, you know, use Stephen A. a little better. I would like to see Stephen A. in a host role like they put him in, uh, but make sure that he is prepared for these interviews and that he doesn't um, act like he has never seen the fighter or the uh, fighter's opponent fight before. Uh, I think it's very important, but I think ESPN is on the road the key thing is going to be matchmaking. Top Rank does not have the depth of roster, really no promoter does, to put on the kind of fights every week. So they're going to have to go outside and sign some other fighters or work with other promoters to put theirs on. And an example of that is Terrence Crawford. Crawford is my fighter of the year for 2017. Uh, he's moving to welterweight. There's oodles of good fights out there for him. But does he get them? Because the fights we would want him to see would be Errol Spence, who is with PBC, who would fight on Showtime, maybe Fox. Uh, Keith Thurman, same thing. Sean Porter, same thing. You go down with all those guys, so the best fights for... Terrence Crawford are going to be fighters who are not going to be appearing on ESPN. So Top Rank has said, Bob Arum specifically said, hey, we will work with other promoters. We'll lend one of our fighters out if they lend one of their fighters out. And I think that that is something that has to occur for this series to reach uh, its pinnacle. Put fighters on, even maybe two fighters that aren't top ranked fighters, to make sure that each month uh, there's going to be 18 shows on ESPN in 2018. Each time ESPN has a show, the fans are getting two really good quality fights. So that is my thoughts on ESPN. HBO, it's matchmaking as well. Um, HBO has long been the leader. It's had the best fighters over the last few years. Uh, when you go historically back over the last 25 or 30 years, you know, it was the heart and soul of boxing. And it still has a good roster of fighters. 2017, there was way too much pay-per-view. Way too much pay-per-view and far too... Uh, good quality fights that HBO could have had on the air. They're going to have to work on that. And I think Peter Nelson, who is a really smart guy, who is in charge of uh, sports at HBO, I think he needs to really put the hammer down on the promoters. Uh, Sergey Kovalev is fighting. He's coming back on HBO on March 3rd. Kovalev's an entertaining fighter. I love to see him fight. But they announced on November 25th that he was going to be fighting on March 3rd. I hate to see fights announced when there's no opponent because you get what's going to happen on March 3rd. Uh, Igor Mikhailik is going to be the opponent who is not a particularly attractive opponent for Sergey Kovalev. They're trying to set up a match with Dmitry Bivol, who's going to fight Sullivan Barrera on that undercard. I just don't want to see these prime spots wasted by total mismatches. We saw what happened with Kovalev and Shabransky, and I think we're going to see a similar thing there. So I think that HBO really needs to take a look at their matchups 
and understand that if they are going to do this, that they have to compare, be competitive in the marketplace. They primarily judge themselves against Showtime, and Showtime blew their doors off. Let's be honest. If you compare HBO and Showtime and said who had the best fights, I'm not talking pay-per-view. I'm talking on the networks. In 2017, there's no question it was Showtime. Uh, Showtime aired a lot of really intriguing fights, and they're doing that again, um, to, it looks like, at the start of 2018. So HBO needs to up its game. I think HBO has terrific production value. I think their shoulder programming is good. I would make a few tweaks to Jim Lampley's The Fight Game that he does, but I at least like the fact that they're acknowledging that they have a big uh, player in boxing and they're they're giving it a place uh, to, to try to build interest and promote it. Um, and HBO does a lot of really good shoulder programming with boxing. Showtime uh, has done a lot as well. Showtime really promotes very hard. Uh, the, um, they get out there and they sell their fights. I think, you know, one of the things I think that I love Al Bernstein. I think he's terrific. Uh, Pauli Malignaggi and Ma Mauro Ronaldo are both good, but sometimes they get a little bit out of control, too excited, and there's this uh, uh, almost pro wrestling quality to it. Um, I love Mauro's enthusiasm. I think sometimes you have to tamp it down a little bit, though. Uh, and Pauli, I think, you know, work with Al. Sometimes we got in there and we had uh, Pauli just going on and on and didn't work with Al, who, t in my mind, is the best guy as a number two in the business. Al Bernstein is terrific uh, and really does a great job. I think, you know, utilize him more, uh, work with Morrow to spot Polly better, to give Polly spots, because Polly's really sharp and he's been in the ring and he picks things out. I think we need to do that. But I think uh, boxing in 2018, I it was a great year in 2017, and I'm anticipating another really good year. I'd like to see a few of those tweaks from the various networks. I think it could be really good. Um, there's going to be a lot of boxing on television. Here's hoping it's a great year again. Let me know what you think in the comments, uh, what you like, what you don't like, what you want to see, what you don't want to see. I think it all will be great. I'll pass your comments along uh, to the appropriate parties, and hopefully it will make for 2018 being the best possible year it can be from a boxing standpoint. For Yahoo Sports, I'm Kevin Ioli. Please hit that subscribe button. You'll get all of my content here. I appreciate it, and we will talk to you all soon.